Uh, hi, Dr. Richard and Mirhan. Today I'll be talking to you about share pricing, chapter 8. Uh, my phone is here recording and my laptop here with the slides. Uh, I'll edit it in a way so you can see both. So let's just jump right in. Uh, let's talk about some theory first. So what is dividends? Dividends is basically um, uh, what is paid to the shareholders depending on them, uh, how big the share they've um, bought is. Uh, it's basically their return on investment on every share they buy. There are two types of dividends, the preferred dividends and the common dividends. Uh, preferred share, two types of shares, uh, the preferred shares and the common shares. So the preferred shares actually have a higher priority than the common shares and they um, uh, have more uh, authority even though they don't have um, uh, voting, uh, voting rights. They usually don't have voting rights. Uh, however, because their shares are more expensive, uh, they have more authority than the common shares. And in terms of liquidation, um, after the creditors, preferred shares have the priority to be paid before the common shares. And if they're not paid this year, then their debt will be carried over next year for the company that they have to pay next year. So what is the purpose of share pricing? Share pricing, its purpose is to... Um, help people or anyone decide if a share is worthy of uh, purchasing uh, according to the dividends that is already paid or the dividends policy or the dividends that will be pay paid in the future. Um, so this basically helps uh, financial managers and people decide whether a share is worthy of purchase. So there are four different types of scenarios. There are the uh, zero growth rate, the constant growth rate, the variable growth rate, and the no dividends. Uh, scenario. I'll go through each one, setting an example and setting what each one is. So the zero growth rate or the constant dividends uh, rate, it basically means that the dividend stays the same indefinite, indefinitely. And in this scenario, we use it. We act. We use it as a. Uh, we use it as a perpetuity. So we use the formula P zero equals D over R. P zero being the present value that um, we of the share which is what we're trying to find out to see if the share is uh, worthy of purchasing. Um, and then the D is the dividends and R is the required, uh, uh, required rate of return. So let's take this example, uh, this for example, uh, suppose stock is expected to pay a 0.5 dividend every quarter and the required return is 10% with quarterly compounding. What is the price? So the pure zero will equal 0 0.5 over 0 0.1 divided by four. We just substituted what's given into the equation. However, the reason why we divided the required rate of return by four is because they want, wanted it to be, um, they, they're paying the dividends every quarter. If they're paying it annually, which what usually most of the questions are, we just do it 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.1. But because they pay quarterly, we have to divide it by four. Okay. The second one, uh, the second scenario is a constant growth rate, which is basically states that every year, uh, the dividends increases by a specific rate, for example, 10%. So every year, year one, year two, year three, the um, dividends uh, increases by a specific percentage. This, uh, so we use this formula instead of using something like this. Instead of doing uh, D1 over 1 plus R plus D2 over 1 plus... Uh, instead of doing all of this, we just use this formula. The present value equals the dividends that was just paid times one plus the dividends growth rate, all divided by the required rate of return minus the dividends growth rate. And because the dividends that was just paid times one plus the growth rate equals D1, we can shorten the, the formula by using D1 over R minus G. So let's, get, let's see an example about the scenario. What would you pay for a share today if the dividend is 0 0.65 constantly growing at 5% and your required return is 7.5? So we have D0, we have the uh, the G and we have the R here. We wrote our givens right here, and if we put it in um, if we put it in our uh, in the equation, we would say that P zero equals zero point six five, which is the dividends times one plus five percent divided by seven point five percent minus five percent. Seven point five percent minus five percent is basically the R minus G. It'll all equal twenty seven point three dollars. This basically means that what the share today costs $27.3. And that's how we use the formula for the constant growth. 
The third scenario is the variable growth, which basically means um, uh, we use the zero growth rate and the constant growth rate at the same time, or we use different variables. So for example, it can tell you that uh, the first year, the dividends grew in a specific percentage, the second year, the specific percentage, third year, another specific percentage, and then after that, it grew constantly. So that this will make it have, this will make it be done in two steps. So let's take this, for example, firstly, we have to increase every year by the specific percentage it was given. And then after that, we have to uh, calculate um, the present the present value of the year that it started to become constant and then we did it discount it back to the present value of today and then add up the present value of today with the past three or four years whatever the question was asking and then that will give us, give us the present value of the share today i know it's complicated but let's just see an example and you'll know what i mean so Suppose we expect company XYZ to pay a dividend of 0.75 next year, which we expect to grow by 45% of the following year and an extra 25% in the third year. After that, we expect growth to continue at 10%. Our required rate of return is 12%. What is the value of XYZ's shares today? So, this is the picture of the answer I wrote. So we wrote, I wrote my givens, which was D1 equals 0.75. Note that I wrote it D1 because it told us the dividends is being paid next year, which is dividends D1, not D0. It wasn't paid this year, it's being, being paid next year. So that's D1 that was already given. G is 10% and R is 12%. I calculated D2, D3, and D4 depending on using the percentages they gave me, and they gave me these answers, and then I, I drew my timeline. T1, we calculated the present value for D1 using D1 that, we, that was given. In year two, we calculated the present value using a future value divided by one plus R to the power of N, uh, using the D2 that I calculated after the 45% increase. T3, I, calcul I calculated uh, the present value using the 20 after the 25% increase. After T3, everything became constant with only uh, with the growth rate being 10%. So I calculated D4 and put the dividends in. However, starting from D4, or from T4, we have to calculate the present value in year three. So how do we do that? Right here, we did uh, P3 equals D4, which is 1.5, divided by the required rate of return minus the growth rate, which is the gro constant growth rate, which is 10%. So we substitute the numbers into the formula, it will come up as 75. However, this is not the answer because this is the share price at, at year three. If we go, if we do the, if we discount it back to year one, uh, if we discount it back to year one, uh, we have to use the present value formula, which will decrease it back to 53.3. If we add 53.3 to the 2.51, which is year one, two, and three, it'll give us 55.89%, which is the share price today. Finally, the no dividends policy, basically, it's a formula that you just put in the givens. What do you need for the no dividends policy? It basically means the company doesn't pay any, pay any dividends. You need the net income, number of shares outstanding, and the average price equity ratio. So the formula we use is the net income divided by the numbers of shares outstanding times the price, uh, um, uh, times the average price equity ratio. Okay, net income divided by the numbers of shares outstanding is the earnings per share. So the formula for no dividends is basically earnings per share times the price earnings ratio. So in this example, they told us that the uh, shares outstanding was 25 million, the net income was 8 million, and the average price earnings per, per share is 35. So we just did 8 divided by 25 times 35, it gave us the price of the share. Here it's, it said how to calculate the required return. You basically sub, uh, rearrange the formula, the constant growth rate formula so that you can make all the subject and that's basically it. Thank you. That was chapter seven, share pricing, and so forth.